Hello everyone, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I continue to introduce you to the products in my new collection, Let's Celebrate with Spellbinders. In this video, we're going to take a look at my new die called Peony Celebrations. This is this die that I have right here. And if you are familiar with the die sets in my previous collections with Spellbinders, this die is the, exactly the same concept. It is exactly the same idea. It is just a different floral die. It's a peony. If you're not familiar, if you're brand new to my work, I will explain what this die is and how you use it. Here's a look at some of my previous floral dyes. So first we have the Magnolia Blooms die. That was the very first die that I designed. Then I have the Anemone Blooms die. There was also, still is, a Poinsettia die. I don't have it on this sheet here because I have it separately with my Christmas collection. And now we have this peony one. Now all of these flowers, all of these floral dyes, I'm not mentioning these, I'm not talking about these because these are glimmer plates and we're not talking about these, we're just talking about the dyes. So all of these floral dyes, these three, they're all about the same size. And the reason for that is so that you can use them together on a project. You don't necessarily need to use just one die. You can bring in parts and pieces of different flowers into your project so that you have different florals on your dice. I do have a one card. Let me grab it. Oh, here it is. So here's my card. I did this as an example to show you how you can use these different florals together. So here on the front, this is the peony die. This is the peony die as well. I have a little bit of hair here. Now this, and then this, that's the magnolia die. And then this here, that's the anemone. And also this little bud here, that's the anemone as well. So one card, but I combined three different floral die sets on this project. So this die has two pieces to it. There is a detail die. This one cuts the flower outline, the flower leaves, and these flower buds for you. Let me grab my parts and pieces. I already have some die cutting done to show everything up close. So with this die, you can die cut the outline. Here is one where I die cut it from white cardstock. On this card, you can see the outlines cut from gold. And then this same die will also cut flower petals for you and it will add detail to the petals. So here you can see the petals and they are still staying in the outline. With this piece, you can die cut the outline pop the petals out to have just the outline or you can cut the outline together with the petals. Now, why would you want to pop the outline so that you can add a different color outline over the petals? So it's in a way it is like inlay die cutting, which was very popular. This is a really cool technique that was popular a few years ago, but you don't really, you're not really inlaying anything. You're not popping the petals out because that's a lot of individual pieces and that would take a lot of time to inlay those pieces back into this outline. So what you do instead, you just get rid of the petals in this piece and you lay it over your colored piece to have a beautiful image like this. So that's one die. And then the other die in this set is an outline. And what I like to use this for, I like to cut it from vellum to create a shadow piece. You don't necessarily have to cut it from vellum. You can cut it from, you know, white cardstock or black cardstock or whatever color cardstock you want. I just really like to do vellum because that gives me a nice soft outline to my flower. That is the idea and the basic how to for this die set. I went ahead and I did some die cutting so that I can show you different ways how this flower die can be assembled. So first of all, my favorite way to use these floral dies is to die cut the petals from uh, some cardstock on which I can do coloring using my alcohol markers. 
here, I used Simon Says Stamp 130 pound cardstock and I used my Copic markers to do coloring. So each of these flowers were colored using Copic markers. They have different shades here, so different combinations. I have done some die cutting from that paper here. So again, this is Simon Says Stamp 130 pound cardstock. I do have some petals falling out, but not a lot so I can put them back in. So that's the paper that I would use if I wanted to do coloring. You could also do ink blending with these. You can die cut this from whatever color, uh, whatever cardstock you like to use for ink blending and then ink blend using inks to add a little bit of color to your flower. I'm not doing this today, but I wanted to mention that to give you an idea. You can also cut this flower from colored cardstock. And this is what I've done. Here I have a bunch of pieces cut from different colors of Spellbinders colored cardstock to give you different color flowers. Now this flower over here, you might notice that it already has a little bit of shading added to the petals. I used my Copic markers. I brought in my Copic marker chart. Here it is. And I looked at what colors of markers would work well on this cardstock color. And I went with RV19 and then the R39 colors to add that shading. When I add the white outline over this shading, you can see how nice that looks. So there you can, you can have a beautiful white outline and then a little bit of shading added to the petals. It looks very beautiful. So that's another way that you can use these. You don't have to add any shading. You can just have plain colored flowers. These look fantastic as well. I mean, I just love this uh, yellow color. But uh, this is Spellbinder Saffron, so this looks really nice on yellow. Then we have the Barely Peach, also from Spellbinders, for a nice and soft peony. This one would be a nice peach sorbet peony and uh, so on. So these are the things that you can do. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, when you die cut your peony, this is a very detailed die. It cuts fine. It actually cuts perfectly in my die cutting machine. I'm using platinum. Uh, I have two machines. I have platinum and platinum six die cutting machines and it cuts fine in both machines. Depending on what machine you have, you might need to use a shim to cut this because this is very, very detailed. Mine cuts beautifully. In fact, I need to add uh, little pieces of tape from the back. And here I like to use my Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape. I also have this really fun dispenser. It is actually available on the Spellbinders website. So I use pieces of yellow tape and I just add the pieces from the back and these pieces help hold all of the petals together until I am ready to either put my flower onto a shadow layer or put it onto a card, you know, using foam adhesive or glue. For these flowers, I didn't do that uh, because I thought that this cardstock would hold on its own. This is a 130 pound cardstock and it's still, this die is still cut through it. So you can see I have petals falling out, but that's okay. Not a lot of petals fall out, uh, fell out, so we can still work with that. Um, here, I have gold outline and gold leaves, so I can't really do green leaves. But if you wanted to do green leaves for your flowers, say you want to have, you know, a pink and a yellow flower and then do the green leaves, you can just die cut the outline from white cardstock and then use your markers to add color to the die cut. Very easily uh, achievable. So let's go ahead and do some coloring. Okay, so here I have my two markers and I'm just going to add a little bit of shading using the RV19 first. Whoops, see that petal became detached because I did not tape it down, but that's okay. I can grab my tape, add another piece of tape and just tack it in place. We're just doing this temporarily until we are ready to add this onto our project. Uh, in the past, I would also use um, masking paper. I would add a layer of masking paper from the back of my cardstock before die cutting 
it. So that would make my cardstock a little bit thicker and that would help to hold all of the layers in place. So you can also do that, but I kind of feel like it's a little bit wasteful. So I'm now just using the best ever craft tape or, you know, any other low tech tape that you might have in your stash. So next I'm coming in with the R39 color and just adding a little bit of that darker color at the very base of the petal. So I just want to darken them. Not doing any fancy coloring here. My cardstock is colored, so that is providing most of the color for this flower. So I don't really need to worry about doing some fancy blending or anything. I basically need to worry about adding shading to this piece. And I can add more if I wanted to, but I feel like this looks good. So here we have our little flower. What I like to do next is I will just snip these pieces, like the loose pieces off because, well, these are going to be covered by a white layer on top. So I don't really need these on my card. I don't need them sticking accidentally from behind my top die cut. So I just snip these off. I will, I can also snip the flowers apart and then create a separate my own arrangement. I'm not going to do that just yet. I will, I will show you that later, but not, uh, not just yet. So next I have white outlines and I like to use two to create a thicker, a thicker die cut. Actually, I've already adhered two together here and I hope you can see this on camera. So this one is a, feels a little bit thicker, you know, feels a little bit nicer in my hand. This one's kind of light, you know, um, kind of flimsy. So I like to do two because first of all, it's a little bit more sturdy, but also because I have more depth to my flower this way. So I would add it onto my petals like this. Before I add these, I want to add coloring. And what I want to do is, first of all, I want to color the buds. I will use the same markers as I just used for the colored cardstock piece, just so that everything matches. And then I'm going to use green for the leaves because, well, I obviously want to have green leaves here on this die cut. So just doing some quick coloring. Again, I'm not really worried about doing any blending. I just want to add color to my die cut. Next, using my favorite greens, and that is YG67. I am leaving a little bit of that white border because I want to preserve that white border all around my images. Next, using YG17. Okay, coloring this, coloring the flower stem here, and then using the YG03. So again, super simple coloring. And once I add this on top, it's going to look like this. So let me go ahead and finish my coloring and I will be back. Here is a look at this piece once finished. I haven't glued the pieces together, but this gives you an idea of how this is going to look. I'm also going to layer this over some of the other die cuts to give you an idea of the different effects that you can have with this die. See, it looks so beautiful. Of course, it just depends on your style. This for me, this is, this is more my style. This is not exactly my style. So I don't always do this. I will go for the gold paper and the Copic colored uh, white petals, but you can also do this. In fact, you can also die cut the white outline from green cardstock, snip the leaves away, and then just tug the leaves under your flower 
to, you know, to have green, to have the leaves cut from green cardstock. And if you wanted to, you could add some shading to those as well. Now, speaking of shading, if you want to add shading to your die cuts, you don't necessarily need to do the shading from the inside out. You can start your shading from the outside and just ink blend the outside in. So you'll keep the in the lightest, the center of the flower, the lightest, the lightest, but then you'll focus your blending. You'll add a little bit of the darker color around the petals. Let me actually demonstrate that maybe on this little piece here. Before I do the ink blending, I want to snip these leaves away so they are not getting in the way of our ink blending. So I just looked, this is the Spellbinders Beeswax cardstock. Very beautiful, I love this color. So speaking of ink blending, depending on the size of the blending brush that you have or the blending tool that you have, you can get really detailed or you can do just general blending. I have this smaller brush from Simon Says Stamp. I also like to use these smaller brushes from Spellbinders. Here I have a little container with a bunch of different brushes. Now these actually come in sizes so there's one pack and you get three different sizes. There is a large, medium, and a small, although all of these are fairly small. So with brushes like these, you can get really detailed when you do your ink blending. So let's go ahead and try to, do, to use this brush. I'm using Honey Ink by Simon Says Stamp. And let's try some blending. I really like these brushes because they pick up quite a lot of ink. I'm a heavy blender. I like to add a ton of ink when I'm ink blending. So these brushes are really great for me. But I know that we are all different when it comes to ink blending. Many of you like to go very light handed. I am a heavy, heavy inker heavy blender. I like things vibrant and colorful on my projects. So let's add a little bit more ink to the large flower. I do have card examples created uh, with this die. Obviously, you can find images on the Spellbinders website. I'm also going to add images here. I, I don't have actual cards to show you because I had to ship all of my cards to Spellbinders office because they needed them for photography to take pictures for the catalog. So I only have the black card here because that's the one that I just made recently. But I do have pictures of all the cards that I made. So I'm going to add a couple of pictures here so that you can see some ideas, some examples of how this die can be used instead of watching me ink blend. Because ink blending takes a little bit of time. So that looks about right. I mean, this is not perfect. It's in fact, it is far from perfect. But once I add my white outline on top, you can see that it didn't really matter that the ink blending wasn't perfect. It still looks great. In fact, let me try and use a different white outline. So even if I use the true white without any coloring on the leaves, it still looks beautiful. I just, I love how easy it is to use this dye. So if you like to color, you can color with this dye. If you like to ink blend, you can ink blend with this dye. If you don't like coloring or ink blending, you can still use it and have beautiful, colorful flowers with a solid layer of color. So here I have assembled a few floral clusters using the techniques that I have just showed you. And I also wanted to mention that you can snip these flowers apart. You can cut them apart and create your own clusters. You can combine different color flowers into one cluster. You can make larger clusters if you want or smaller clusters you can add additional leaves you can manipulate this die cut so don't think that the way it comes is the only way to use it no be creative use your imagination you know combine different die cuts together. Of course, the cuts that you make with your scissors are not going to be perfect. They're not going to be as perfect as the cuts made with a die. But what I like to do is I just cover up those imperfect cuts by another layer, another die cut layer or uh, as a sentiment layer or a leaf layer or something like that. So get creative, cut your pieces apart, create new clusters and enjoy. 
Thanks so much for spending time with me today. I hope you enjoyed the look at my new peony celebrations die with spellbinders. I have videos showing other products in this collection. Be sure to check them out if you have missed them. And I will be back with another crafty video soon. Love you guys. Bye.